set. Perhaps the Sphinx is the head of Set with the body of Horus. There is actually a couple of, um, a married couple uh, here in England who have written a book showing that the Sphinx may have been Anubis. Is anyone aware of this couple? Yeah? Also, if you go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel says Satan is a cherub, and the cherub is a, a, a bull with man's arms and wings. So that would have been the original image of the Sphinx, trying to put himself on top of the pyramid. Quite possibly. We generally, uh, we generally put uh, the lion and the, and the woman's. They say, you know, most people concur that it's uh, the Virgin and Leo, and, and they say that this is one of the very important lines in history when the, when the 25,000 year backward movement of procession comes back around and clocks in here and crosses this line, and then we, that's what the Sphinx is, is peering always into the east for. Um, but but what, we've, what we've come into is the return of the Messiah. It's already here. And it manifests in us, in our consciousness, and our self-determination, and our responsibility. <coughs> Yeah. yeah, and we are absolutely growing in that every day. Yeah, we, we might have a long way to go. But three years. That's exactly. Um, October 17, 2016, the day before the Feast of Tabernacles. That's quite in harmony with everything because exponentially the Christ is returned and it gets. It, the download of Christ consciousness. Here we have I know, here we have I will. Here we have Saturn, and here we have Uranus, his daddy. Uranus means the heavens. Remember, Saturn is the last visible planet. Uranus is the first invisible planet. It's the heavens. It's the higher octave, which we inherit. Uranus is the eighth, the octave. Saturn is the seven. In fact, set means seven. That's what it means. Shabbat. Seven. And that's why the Sabbath day is Saturn's day. It's really the seventh day. And the sun being the first. Uh, but, but the lineup of this is unmistakable. We are now in Aquarius and Leo. The ruler is Regulus the Christ Messiah in the heart of the lion, the sun. And he's in his co-rulership with Aquarius, Saturn, and Uranus, the true Christ. Most Bible astrologers will tell you that Uranus is the true, true Christ. 24 revolutions of Uranus give you 2,116 years. 12 is half of that. That's the, it's that famous <coughs> professional number, 108 or 216. So these 24 revolutions of Uranus, 12 revolutions of Uranus. In the scriptures, it always talks about a thousand years and the devil will be bound for a thousand years and the day with man is as a thousand years with God and, and they will rule with Michael for, as priests and kings for a thousand years. It's talking about Uranus. The heavens, Uranus, the Greek word for heavens, is all about this number. And so, this is, in, in Bible astrology, this is how long a platonic month is. That much. 2,016 years. That's why Jesus ruled from... Look at the scriptures. Jesus was born at 4 BCE. And... Quite possibly. And 2,016 years later, we come to the year 2012. <coughs> and how do we know this? Well, we know that that was the year. How do we know that? How do we know that that was the year? Four years before zero, zero, four years before zero year, or one CE, which is Anno Dominus, the year of the Lord. How do we know that that's the year. If we're going to go along with the Bible story, which is, that's what we're doing here. It's just an exercise. <laughs> but, yeah, but what, 
We're not buying into the, the Ponzi scheme of Jesus, the vicarious saviour. Yeah, just wait. He's coming. In the meantime, uh, you know, the Vatican's uh, going to sodomise us in, in the Inquisition for another thousand years. Uh, sorry? I'm not a Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured, don't worry. Um, so, so, Uranus, this is the thing that we're getting at. Uranus is the Christ. Any Bible astrologer will tell you that. Have a look at Ludwig B. Larson, John H. Annis, Carl Anderson, K Carl with a K, uh, George E. Stowe, Stowe with an E on the end of it. That's, that's probably the four best Bible astrologers you will ever read, and you'll understand all this. So going back to this, before we move on, we're going to try and do a little bit of... Uh, we're going we're gonna to see where all, all of the zodiac really comes from after this, okay? So here we have, so we start here in January, okay? We'll go along with this. Pegasus. This is for the camera because you guys will, won't see this. Should I put it in, the, in here on, the, um, on there for the camera? Okay. Pegasus. First one on the ecliptic. Andromeda in Pisces. Pegasus was in Aquarius. The river of night, Eridanus. That is equivalent to the, um, the ventricular system in, in the cranium. That's what it is. Perseus in Aries, the light bringer, slays Medusa, the starlit night. Every morning when he comes up, there he is, Perseus, in Aries, and he slays the starlit night. Uh, Perseus. Orion corresponds with the uh, optic thalamus in Taurus, in the head, in the cranium. The charioteer, Origa. The dogs. The ship and the Argonauts. Canopus, the beautiful star, the second brightest star in the sky, second to Sirius. Not far away either. The dragon of the north. These are all on the, along the ecliptic. These are 22 constellations, extra zodiacal. The great bear, beautiful. If you look toward the south tonight, you'll see this red star, Arcturus, in the bear, booties. Oh no, hang on, that's no, sorry. Um, <laughs> follow, that you next follow one. the tail round, and then you come quite a bit. <coughs> yes. Yes, you do. It's not far from here. That's the, sorry, this is um, the bark of Ra, the Big Dipper, the Great Bear in Cancer. So we're still, we're still at Cancer. Uh, the Sea Serpent. The Crater. This is the cup that we drink from. Uh, we'll, we'll go back and do a little astrotheological lesson about this in a minute. The Raven, also in Leo. The, there's the bear. Arcturus, the red star, one of four red stars in the sky along the ecliptic. Uh, sorry, no, that's in the northern stars. Uh, corona Borealis, Corona, crown of the north wind. That's in Libra, where the sun sets, because this is the crown that the sun wears, the Christ, the crown of thorns, every day in Libra, where the sun sets. And next door, is Lupus, the wolf, the wolf of night, the victim, Jesus being the victim, and the other constellation is the cross, the southern cross. That's where Jesus gets crucified, with his crown of thorns. The serpent, that's... The serpent's head is right next to Libra. This is the serpent that te tempts Virgo, just above Libra, the head, serpent's caput, is right next to the scales. The scales are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <clears throat> this is kindergarten stuff, isn't it? You know, it's just so ridiculously obvious, and yet people are going to church, and there was an Eve who ate a fruit, and, and she sold us all into <coughs> sin, and all of that happened in the historical linear line from the left brain, which is totally disconnected from cause. Oh, and they're uh, intellectual, and they're smart. We went to um, 
Worcester Minster. Wor Worcester Cathedral, sorry. Yesterday, the day before. Yeah, and uh, who was that? That's the guy who took me around to see uh, yeah. Yeah, the black country. Uh, and uh, we were noticing the people there. Uh, the, the bishop was there and he had a few priests around. And, yeah, um, and there were some women there that were there serving also. I don't know what role deacons, what are they allowed to be? Anyway, we noticed, we clearly, the three of us noticed, and John Paul was there. Was that you that was with? No, it wasn't you. No, it was uh, Chris. Yeah. The three of us noticed that they sounded very carefully articulate and intellectual. <laughs> oh, Jesus, when they talk about Jesus, they're so articulate, you know. <laughs> it's all here in the left brain. It's all the false spirituality. It's only the baptism of the psychic waters that they've been baptised in. It's four baptisms. They get to miss out on the spirit and the fire. Because they're stuck in the water. In the left brain. Anyway. The wise centaur. A fucus. A, fu a fucus means serpent bearer. He is a deacon of Scorpio. Scorpio is at the bottom of the spine. When a fucus <coughs> sends those kundalinis up to Orion, the optic thalamus, from the bottom of the, the spinal cord to the top, the, the Lamb of God, Orion, or the Lamp of God, the eye that sees, <coughs> then we've done our uh, turning lead into gold. A fucus, the serpent bearer, right where he should be. If he were in the feet, Pisces, then you would question this science. But if the serpent bearer is where the kundalini rests, it's the science of as above, so below. The lyre of Orpheus. There you go. That's another beautiful... She, this sign gives us the fifth brightest star, Vega. And in the Japanese myth, her name is Orihime. And she's on one side of the Milky Way galaxy, and her lover, the ploughboy, he's um, Altair in uh, Aquila. You can see them tonight, the, the, the Summer Triangle. These are two stars, of, and the Summer Triangle braces the two hemispheres of the Milky Way galaxy and the Milky Way galaxy goes straight through the middle and in Japan they celebrate Tanabata on the 7th of July every year and they say Orihime, Vega, only gets to see Hikoboshi, Altair, once a year on the 7th of July. Yeah, because at midnight on the 7th of July, just look up and you'll see the Milky Way galaxy going straight up like that and you'll see Altair and Vega the lovers, and it only happens perfectly in alignment on the 7th of July, every year. Just like Christmas, Christmas Eve, look up, you get to see the brightest star in the sky, Sirius, right above. And if she's right above at midnight, when Jesus is born, the sun must be directly below. That's an alignment. People miss that when they go to the January for, uh, New, uh, New Year's Eve parties, you know, oh, look at the... Man-made fireworks, at the... and there's Sirius at Christmas and New Year's Eve. There's Sirius, and there's the three wise men that come from the east, the belt of Orion, pointing to Sirius. And next door to Sirius is Cancer, the manger. Jesus is born in a manger, and there's two donkeys, a Celis Borealis and a Cerus uh, Australis, in Cancer, and the list goes on and on and on. It's. Oh, overhead in the ecliptic, yeah. on the ecliptic, yes. not... which means it can be overhead like, because your ecl the ecliptic might be way down south here, because we're very high up in England, so you've got to look to the southern skies, yeah. and you'll see it, and she'll be overhead, yeah. but, but really, I tell, I tell a lie, it's at 12, because of processional slippage, she's not right there directly at overhead because remember in the gospels it says and the three wise men followed the star till it rested on top of the house astrological house where the child is born capricorn 24th of december new year's eve and there's virgin virgo on the eastern horizon at midnight virgo is rising it's the rising sign so the sun is born of a virgin every year on the 24th of december or the 25th because virgo is on the horizon and so when you look up, you'll see Sirius, but she'll be back about 27, 28 degrees. So you, you more, you, these days, you have to wait till about 1.30, 2 o'clock for 
the three wise men and the, and the star in the east to land, you know, to rest directly above where the, the house where the child is born. Sirius isn't on the ecliptic. No, it's not on the ecliptic, but, well, it's even more south. It's a southern star, right? It's on the equator. Is it's it on the equator? It's below the, it's a bit below a little bit below. Yeah. Below the equator. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely in your southern. In Australia, where I am in Melbourne, straight up. Yeah, because I'm closer. Yeah, but yeah. you guys, but the point is, all right, ecliptic, what it, it's gone halfway in its journey because Sirius always sets, always, because she's close to the ecliptic. All setting stars are close to the ecliptic, right? The northern stars, Polaris never sets because he's in the north, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Orpheus, the liar, the eagle, there's Altair, the 12th brightest star in the sky. There's the dolphin, and then the swan, Cygnus. Deneb is one of the three stars, including Vega and Altair, that make the summer triangle. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. It's just be I don't get to see it. I see the winter triangle, where Orion is, because it's south. Orion is south of me. Uh, but I don't see the summer triangle. You guys get to see that. The dolphin, the nova has just appeared in the dolphin. Anova has in, in the dolphin, has it? Yeah. Alrighty, now, so everywhere the 12 and the 7 are, because there are 12 passive, uh, universal forces, and 12 active, uh, 7 active, and these are the Elo Elohim. And they mix their essences as they go around and around and around. Never return to the same place, only every four million years, I think it is, yeah. These things, uh, let's go back to what we read, Alvin Boyd Kuhn, someone did ask me, what was the name of that uh, book you mentioned at the start? Alvin Boyd Kuhn, Kuhn is K-H-U-N. Uh, who is? I think it's K U H N, isn't it? Thank you. If it's German, K U H N. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> who is this King of Glory? Certainly one of the most enlightening books I have ever read. Uh, and as he said, um, the charts of the starry heavens, and they scattered over the major parts maps in in, in, the, in the ancient civilized lands. Uh, the Gnostics truly declared that all the supernatural transactions asserted in the Gospels were counterparts or representations of what took place above. Uh, the Oracle of Delphi of the first century, Plutarch, he wrote in, uh, I think it was Obsolence of Oracles, or Isis and Osiris, yeah, Iris, Isis and Osiris, that um, there was a guy called Ephemeris, who in the third century, which was 300 years before the first century of the Common Era, 2,300 years ago, said that this guy took the Gospels, he went around all over the world, and took the Gospels and made them literal. And to this day, the process of doing that is named after this man. Elfe <laughs> now, Elphemerus. And I forget how you... But it, <clears throat> doing this, bringing the legends down, is what the ancients were all about. The ruling empires did this to secure their divine right to rule. Otherwise, they're not divine, right? So Queen Elizabeth's just one of us then, you see, without the myths. Her myth is this literal story of the Jesus story. And she's brought it down and made it literal. Not her, the Vatican. They're in the same, it's, it's the same hocus-pocus Ponzi scheme. To, to blind us from the true light, the true light of what we are and who we are. 
and the true process of bringing the Christ up from within, the chrism, the fluids. Yes, brother. Oh, sister, sorry. Yeah, well, that's on the South Pole and the North Pole. That's the hex. Saturn is the hex that you see on the Star of David, um, which was originally the red one from the Rothschild uh, Empire. <laughs> and um, that star is the star of Saturn. David is Saturn. And, of course, so is the Seal of Solomon. It's all, it's all Saturn. It's the Seal of Solomon, they call it the Star of David. Um... There's, there's many names for this, but this is why they advertise it on their flag, the Israeli flag. Because they're telling you that the new Jesus is over. You see, when the Pope retired on the 11th of February, that was the Jupiterian Pope. The Jesuit Pope is Saturnian. Jupiter's out, Pisces is gone. Aquarius is in, the ruler of Aquarius is Saturn. They wear black, the Jesuits work for Saturn. Satan, absolutely. They are Saturnian. And when the Pope retired at 12 o'clock midday on the 11th of February, exactly 71 days to the day that Mussolini signed the Concordant with the Vatican, to the day, 11th of February, six hours late, later, the lightning from who struck the Vatican? Who sends lightning? No. Zeus. Jesus. The ruler of Pisces. Jupiter Zeus, he's got the, the thunder. So, Popey Poo's down below, who said, I can't continue my Patrine ministry anymore. Patrine would be Peter, Jew Peter, the rock. Petra means rock. And Patrine, he clearly said that to the BBC. I cannot continue to go on to words to that effect in the Petrine ministry. And he retired. And then you get this amazing historical thunderbolt on the same day from Zeus. And then three weeks later, the Saturnians come in. And they're advertising it with the Star of David. Same club. Same club of pimps. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and they've got a farm of slaves and they pimp out agents to make sure that we all pay them. And they're a big club <coughs> of Five P's. Pedophiles, pimps, parasites, psychopaths. Politicians. Yeah. yeah, but we shall not dwell on that negativity. We have so many beautiful things to contemplate. So, this science is everywhere. Well, would it be perhaps in the Bible? Yes, it has. I've done many presentations uncovering this science of the Twelve and the Seven. Uh, the Quran. Well, let's have a look at the Quran, shall we? And see if they know anything about the seven and the twelve. <clears throat> Here we have Quran, Surah 25. This is the website you can go to. This is one of their most famous Quran concordances. God exalted be he, says, blessed, magnified is he who has placed in the heaven constellations, 12 of them, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Al Sangula, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. They are the mansion for the seven orbiting planets. This is Quran, because Quran is nothing but science, friends. Science is religion. Religion is science. It's all syncretism. It's all one. All of them merge in the middle. I'm expecting about that, sorry. Sorry? Um, that the reason that, that that exists in there is because, because Western astrology was basically exported to the Arab lands um, after it was banished from Christendom. So and then they brought it back. Astrology was basically kept safe in the Arab lands before it came back more or less at the time of the Crusade. Absolutely. They, for... There. For several hundred years, astrology was an official science in Islam. Only recent, recently, when the, uh, when the fascist Islamic um, royal families took over Islam, I'm talking about the oil, the oil criminals here, 
that are really, really destroying this planet. Those, those are the ones who are behind the militant Islamic, just like the Christian killers. They've shed enough blood. We don't have to go down that, that track. There's millions of lives that have been shed at the hands of so-called Christians. Well, Christians have the blood. So-called. Because you can't kill if you're a true Christian. We are true Christians. Yeah, Christ right. Christianity means the light, consciousness, the sun. Yeah, depending on what level you want to see it at. There's seven levels. Astrologically, Jesus Christ is the sun. Astrotheologically, Jesus Christ is the sun. Theologically, Jesus Christ is the sun, S-U-N, S-O-N. Um, biochemically, it's the chrism. The oil is produced in the, in the cloister, the claustrum, the holy claustrum, the Santa Claus. Yeah, and that oil gets differentiated at the pineal gland, Mary, and the uh, Joseph, and the pituitary gland, Mary. They descend as they're differentiated into a negative and a positive down the Pingala, down the Ida, down to the Sacrum, and from there, the oil rises. The oil, the bread, the manna, the chrism, the soma, the fish, the salt, the wax. Wax because it comes from the cerebrum. Cere is, is wax. That's the Christ. That's the true story. Biochemically, we are an alchemical laboratory just waiting to experience a metamorphosis. Or should we say apotheosis? Because humans apotheosize, <laughs> animals metamorphosize. So we're about to get our wings, if we haven't already gone. Yeah. Apotheosis in Greek means from God to God. Apotheos. And that's, that's what we are experiencing. This is what's going on. Do we get the word sincerely from that as well? Yes, we do. Sincere. <clears throat> Back in good old Rome, and I went to Rome and I saw a lot of marble statues past the Milvian Bridge. When you pass the breathtaking, uh, ostentatious Milvian Bridge where all that history happened, and you see those big marble eagles, and you wonder who the hell sculpted those, and then there's another one. There's eagles and columns of marble on that bridge. You know something big's happening in Rome. You can't be prepared for Rome. But in Rome, they used to make marble wax, uh, marble sculptures. Sculptures. Our sister asked us about the word sincere. Sin means without. Seer means wax. That's the same seer wax as the broom and the cerebellum. Aries, Taurus. Abraham, Abraham, Sarah, Sarah, Abram, Cerebrum. Sarah, again, who is Isis. There is Ra, and the bellum is El. That's Isis. That's why the Romans, every year on the 15th of April, Aries, celebrated Cerealia. We get the word cereal still. It's all astrotheology, all of it. So when they made a, a, a sculpture and they got to the very end and just finished the eyebrow and polished it, no cracks, it was without wax. But halfway through, the crack appeared, but it was a good, very expensive piece of marble. They wanted to get some money for it, so they plugged those cracks with wax and got a, a lower price for them. So shop, shoppers didn't have a lot of money, would buy the ones with wax. They were with wax. Con chair, but these are sin seer without wax, so they're honest, they're not deceptive, they're true, original, uncracked. And so, <clears throat> this wax that's that's where it, that's the land flowing with milk and honey, where Sarah and Abram come from. <laughs> the honey is produced by the pineal gland, and the milk is produced by Mary, the pituitary gland. That's the, the land flowing, it's in the head, heaven, heaved up. Heal is for hell. Head is for heaven, you see. So when we return that Christ, and how we do that is by looking after baby Jesus that gets born every month in Bethlehem. Bethlehem's Virgo, the third chakra, the solar plexus. And when the moon transits our sun sign, so for all you Leos, for example, when the, 
Moon is, oh, let's pick on Aquarius, because tonight is Aquarius. 